Hello and welcome to the Kick in the Creatives podcast, hosted by myself, Sandra Busby, and my fellow creative, Tara Roskell, offering you interviews, inspiration, motivation, and a gentle prod in the right direction. And for lots more information, challenges, and other useful tools to help you get creating, you can go to kickinthecreatives.com. And of course, this is where you can also find today's show notes. Enjoy the show. Welcome to today's episode and today we're going to chat about changing your mindset around your art. But before we get on to that, thank you so much to everyone who's been sharing the work they've been doing for the challenges on social media. Keep them coming. We love seeing what you're doing. And a huge thank you to our latest Kofi supporters. Your support shows us that you like what we do and you'd like us to continue. And we're going to thank you personally at the end of the show. Yeah, and finally, thanks to our sponsor, Evolve. Evolve can teach you how to paint in a realism style to a professional level in a year or less and for the fraction of the price of art school. Not only do they give you all the lessons and support online, but they also send you all the materials you need as well. You can watch a free webinar from Evolve by going to kickinthecreatives.com forward slash Evolve webinar. If you want to hear more about the programme, you can go back and listen to episodes 67 and 73. Anyway, Sandra, what is new with you? well I finished my painting yeah I mean it's been going on a little while hasn't it (laughs) yeah you kept on tinkering didn't you well yeah I did and of course the last few podcast episodes I've been going oh nearly finished nearly finished and I went on holiday and all the different things that sort of like got in the way of finishing it but I have finally finished or or rather you know what was it Van Gogh that said uh paintings are never really completed or finished they're, they're merely abandoned <laughs> and I always feel yeah. like that when I when I get to a certain stage with a painting I'm like right I I am not making any difference to this painting for better for worse with every brush stroke I'm adding and I didn't want to kind of over egg the pudding if you like so I thought no do you know what when I stand back no that's 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 I'm fine that's you know yeah just done. how I wanted it so it's done it's finished um I was surprised how big that was, because that's about as big as the biggest one I've just painted. Is it? Isn't it? Yeah. Uh, you well, said it's, it's, 30, it's 30 by 40 inches, you said. Yeah, so it's a meet, 100 centimetres. Yeah. And uh, by 75 uh, centimetres. Yeah, it's about nearly the same. So it's quite I've big. Done, yeah. It, it I, certainly I, packs it, a punch when you walk into the... If you had that on a kitchen wall, it would certainly yeah. be a talking point, because it is quite big. It, it didn't look that big when you had it on your easel. It doesn't, does it? it? No, it's funny. you need to stand and hold it, I think, that one. Yeah, what I'm going to do... think people are aware how big. No, they're not. Uh, what I think I'm going to do, because I put it on social media just linking it to my the blog post that comes with it. Um, yeah. uh, but what I do need to do is I need to put a full... I think, I think on Instagram I just put a full square on one, but you're right, I need to, I need to do a post where I'm standing and holding it so that people can see that it's big because it's so difficult when you put you know when you it's like I always think this with babies I know how much you're interested in babies (laughs) but when you see people I mean my my um, nephew had a baby and uh, he kept posting pictures of this little baby online and the baby you know yeah it looks small because it's a baby but it didn't look really tiny when I met the baby it was as it was I couldn't believe how tiny it was I was thinking god it just doesn't look tiny in the photographs but it's always the way isn't it but um yeah so I anyway I've done it and it's it's really big and it's going to be one of those ones where when it goes I'm going to really miss its presence because it was because it was so big I think and um got a rather funny title for it and I was yeah I, I saw I, it I don't know whether to explain it on here or not but it's basically it's called all frills and no knickers so um I don't know whether people across the pond will have the same sayings as we do like that over here so they might go what <laughs> what was she talking about but it's called all frills and no knickers and what I did is I wrote the because on, on the back of my paintings I always write the title 
this time I, I, um, I printed out the title in really fancy letters, like really frilly letters, and um, laminated it, stuck it on the back, and then I made another little thing with a QR code to my blog post saying, if you want to know more about the title, scan the QR code and it takes the person straight to the blog post, which explains the, uh, uh, you know, the title and why I chose it. Um, yeah. But anyway, yeah, if you want to know... Why it's called All Frills and No Knickers. Check out my blog post on my website. And Scan the QR why. code, which you can't do on a podcast. You can't, you can't do that. And the QR no. code is on the back of the paint, the actual physical painting. <laughs> yeah. But you can, go to my, you can go to my website, sandrabusbr.com, and then just click the blog. Um, I doubt if I'd have done another post before anyone hears this. Um, but, yeah, it'll explain, it'll explain the... Um, the title but it's a fun title and you know how much I love coming up with titles it's one of my favorite yeah. things and um I I do you know what I knew all along what this was going to be called did you what <laughs> yeah. even before you painted it well I well uh pretty much yeah pretty much because I was holding this thing eating it and it's the first thing I thought when I swallowed it <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> oh yeah that but you know it was quite funny because I thought as as much as this is not what I expected it to be it's given me a great title so yeah it, it was good really it's, I, yeah. you know so yeah so that's right and then then the gallery they want it um obviously which is lovely and I showed Have you they seen I, it that one yeah I sent him a photograph they, for him. Yes. I love that he goes that's, that's really right. fun I really want that for our exhibition in um in April in fact to be honest I showed him when I went to collect my paintings. Do you remember last time I said that I'd sold yeah. some, and I went to uh, collect the other two? And then he said, "Have you got any others for our exhibition?" And I showed him that one, which was in progress, and he said, "Yes, I definitely want that one." And then, but I've never really been given any kind of deadline for anything before with art, really. And, and to be honest, usually I would say, "Well, it'll be done when it's done," <laughs> but. Um, it was one of those things where he said, you know, he emailed me and said, I'd just really like to know how you're getting on. I haven't heard from you, which was funny after what I said last time. Yeah. I couldn't get anything out of him yes. at all. Yeah. And suddenly it's like, I haven't heard from you. Have you done this painting? And he said, I, I really need it by the 20th, the week commencing the 22nd of April. So I was like, oh, OK. So that got my bum back into it. I was like, right, no, I am going to finish this now. I'm just going to stop fanning around and stepping back and looking with fresh eyes and stepping back again. I'm going to I'm going to finish it. So I did. I sent it to him and he went, I love it. He said, yeah, that's definitely coming into the exhibition um, with uh, any others I have. Although he wants my donuts and I'm not I'm not sure I'm willing to give those oh, up. Oh, you wanted that one, didn't you? I think I'm, I think I want to keep it because just what it's just yeah i think i want to keep that so well, i don't why think don't you have just have one. yourself a, 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 a print made yeah mm, mm. it's a difficult one isn't it because it's not like i'm selling my paintings for you know a thousand plus pounds yeah. then it might be worth it <laughs> well hike hike it hike it hike the one because you don't want to sell it yeah, I'll say if you want it, you have to offer me a blooming good price for this one because it has meaning. Oh, just put your price on it. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, so he wants that one. I'm like, mm, I don't how, think how you're much have would that you one. sell that for? How much would you sell it for? I don't know. What would I have to offer you? There you go then. That's your price. Yeah. Yeah. Are but you'd be what, happy you... then. Well, I'd be devastated to see it go. That's the trouble. And it's nothing to do with the fact I like the paintings much. It's, about, it's just about the story behind as I was painting it, what happened afterwards and all this. So it's a bit like that. And I love the painting as well. But, yeah, I, there's a price for everything, isn't there? So anyone listening wants well, to offer me... not necessarily, me, but, yeah. <laughs> ...want to offer me a million pounds, <laughs> then it's yours. <laughs> but, of course, what's frustrating about all this is that... Um, Obviously, the gallery are going to get it. They're going to get it at the um, end of April. It's on my website at the moment for sale. In fact, it, everything's always on my website site for sale. And if I sell it through my website, I get, you know, I'm, I'm the one that gets payment. If the gallery sells it, obviously, quite rightly, they get a commission. But they add a lot of money on it. So they add 50% on the top. So I always think it's a shame because, you know... Do they add 50% or do they charge double? Actually, some of them they charge double. Is that not what they do? Charge double. So actually, 
I'm trying to think what they did last time. So Actually, same, yeah, you're right. They do. Yeah, yeah so it's you're not adding right. Fifty percent. Yeah, they, they. Yeah, they double it. They double it. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, because I, I get yeah because I get half. So it's it's quite it's sort of like so. Of course, the price has to go up to reflect. You know that I need some money, but it never yeah. goes up. So I I won't ever get the amount of money um, that I would get because I can't literally double my price because well, it won't, wouldn't can. sell. Well, no, they but you can because if they, I, could, I guess, yeah. I thought they wanted you to advertise at the price they have it. They do, they do. But of course, it's really so, hard to sell paintings when they're really expensive. From my, yeah. you know, personal self, I think when somebody goes into a gallery, they're already. They've gone there because they like they're art. They're looking for art, I suppose. Yeah. And they usually have money um, because they often they're collectors and they're looking for something, whereas I don't have people like that, you know, stumbling across my website particularly. Yeah. But I just think it's a shame that it has to go up that much and it never... Yeah. He wouldn't put... I mean, I remember when he took my last lot of paintings and they, I, he said, you'll have to um, reflect my prices on your website, which is fine, it's fair enough. But he didn't double my prices, but he still took half the oh. money. That's how it, oh. it's just how it works. Because oh. they, they will otherwise. You, I thought you, know, you meant he doubled your prices. No, or no, he doesn't. He, oh. he puts what he wants on it, which is a lot you more than half. what I put on it, but I get half. Oh. So you don't end up getting much. I mean, no. it's, it's, it's pennies, really. Well, it's not pennies, but you know what I mean, compared to what you should get. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. so that's that. I, I've done it. I'm going to have a, a two or three weeks or, may, or maybe two weeks, really, just funning about in my sketchbook, having fun, um, just doing some fun stuff. And, you know, because you, when you've been working on a big painting like that for a long time, it's quite nice to step back and think, oh, I've got nothing on the go at the moment. I can just draw. <laughs> I can just have fun and... Um, and do all the do some fun, silly things, blind contours, all those things I love doing. I've got two new sketchbooks that arrived, and I'm really, really looking forward to filling those up. And um, I need to clean my art studio because between... Well, you know what I'm like. When I finish one painting, I'm like, right, it has to be all clean and organised before I start a new one. So that's, um, that's on my list of things to do uh, this week. Kevin wished I was like that. He what, sorry? Kevin wishes I was like that. What, all clean and organised. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I am. I am actually quite clean and organised. I'm. I'm not one that can deal with mess at all. Not even in the home. I'm very much the opposite. So, uh, luckily, Paul's pretty, pretty clean and tidy. But anyway, uh, yeah. Talking about you, what is new with you? I have what seen your new? lovely big painting. That's amazing. Oh yes, that. So that's new with me. My big painting, which. It's, it's funny because it is almost the same size as yours. Mine's 32 inches by 40. So it's literally oh, well, okay, yeah. a few centimetres different. So mm. but it's funny because when I looked at mine... Well, mine's 100 centimetres by 75. Yeah, mine's, yeah so mine's 100 centimetres by 82. So mine's oh, fractionally yeah, yeah. Bigger, bigger than yours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just fractionally bigger. But yeah. when I saw mine, I thought it looked way bigger than I thought yours was. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, Because yours just didn't look big on screen. No. Um, Which is kind of weird. But, yeah, that that was quite a strange one because I used acrylics on when they... And I actually much preferred it because I used it slightly different, but I still do find it immensely frustrating Um, because it it just... I ended up going to my pastels and my charcoal in in Go Mixed Media. Yeah. It just frustrates me. And I don't know if it's because... Well, I do know. Obviously, my skills with acrylic are not... Because I don't paint acrylics loads of time, so they're not brilliant. Yeah, if you know what I mean. Yeah. If I yeah. painted pure pure acrylic. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, and, but I just, I just like the tactileness of almost getting in there and using yeah. mixed media because I just, I just find it too slow. It just... I just want to get... I almost like the drawing rather than the painting, I guess. Yeah. Which is more what I can do with, you know, pastels and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah. So, but I I am quite pleased with how it turned out, I have to say. Although when I looked at her at first, I kept thinking, is she too alien looking? <laughs> <laughs> no, she certainly wasn't. You're talking about the big pink one, aren't you? Yeah. 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 No, she doesn't and, look like uh, an alien. It, it's... 
Well, well, a lot of mine do kind of look like futuristic people mm. anyway. So, but uh, yeah, quite, quite a strange one to do. And people are giving me, I'm getting ideas for names for people from different people. Titles it's really funny. The painting yeah, name, yeah, titles. And loads of people were giving me so sad ones. They were really, really sad uh, like grief, and I was like, "Oh no!" Oh God! <laughs> yeah, it's like she looks kind of—I don't know. She does look a little bit sad, but not that sad. And um, and then other people were giving me ones something to do with like something about a clown, obviously because she's got all different colours in her face. And I'd actually been thinking tears of a clown, and I was just painting her, but I don't want to—I don't want to put a word like clown onto her. No, no. Do you know what I mean? Because then that makes it, that's what she is. And I want her to be what anyone wants her to be, if that makes sense. And I don't see a clown in her. I'm looking at her now, actually, on Instagram. I, I've got her in front of me. I wouldn't say she looks sad. I think she looks... Pensive? Thoughtful? Thoughtful. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, I've gone for one that... Uh, Carla Hawke actually suggested which was ethereal whispers because nice because it's just like it doesn't say anything too much do you know what I mean you can read what you want into that yeah which I, I agree prefer. I think a title is one of those things that can make or break a painting like a framing or almost I, you know how I love titling paintings you've yeah. never really been bothered but I, I've always found a title to be very important to me and it frustrates me when I go into galleries and they're, they're named untitled. I'm just, it just drives me nuts. Um, but, yeah, so I, I do like putting a lot of thought into my titles. And, yeah, everything should have a title. And I do, but I do, like you say, it needs to be something that is not going to put someone off and give it a, yeah, you know. So, so if I called her a clown... It's like me, oh, I wasn't thinking, before they looked at the title, I wasn't thinking she was a clown. You know, do you know what I mean? So and a lot of people I are scared of be... clowns. <laughs> so no, I know. And I want it to, I want it to be want open to interpretation. Yeah. When I painted originally, she wasn't a clown. It's just as I was painting, the, the tears of yeah. the clown came into mm. it a little bit. Just, mm. I don't know, just because it's different colours. But yeah, so I think that Ethereal Whispers is quite nice because it's... I think she's kind of ethereal looking, but and she's quiet, uh, much quieter yeah. than your normal work. She is, isn't she? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She's not shouty, is she? Uh, no, I think it, I think it's to do with the colours, and maybe because you normally put stuff over the eyes, you know, and graffiti and stuff over the top, and and that that you haven't this time. So I suppose it is quieter than than your usual work. Yeah, yeah. But any, anyway, that and then my other thing was. I discovered, and this is weird because you actually suggested this to me, me ages ago, mm. um, that ink will work on stretch canvas, acrylic ink. Yeah. Right? And you'd said to me ages ago, oh, why don't, why don't you try your acrylic ink on canvas? I said, oh, it doesn't work. And it was because, I, you know canvas boards you can get? Yeah. When they're just like mounted to a bit of yeah. I don't know, stiff board. Mm -hmm. So I'd had one of those and I tested it think on those thinking it the surface would behave the same of course it doesn't does it no which i didn't realize because they're much more plasticky so the other day i tested it on a canvas well it's bloody great doesn't it <laughs> i always thought that it, i was always surprised that you'd never tried ink on canvas because well i have know. i thought i had because <laughs> i tried it on the canvas board yeah and it was terrible it just sort of sat in puddles uh, mm. and didn't work at all but of course on actual canvas it works which now opens up to a whole realm of possibilities to me but if it's sat in means... puddles anyway can you use a hairdryer to to blow it to directions like you see on some um, of these portrait artists of the year they use a hairdryer to blow things to get it to move you know to drip a certain way or i can imagine it... doing something like that if if it puddled up because it's still well, going to no, stain cause... it it works different on the canvas it it because mm. on the board what, what i do is i put it there and what i like to do is when you spray it you get all lovely effects don't you that ink on a paper say for example yeah and i did, tried it on the canvas board and it would just puddle and if you moved it, it just it wasn't pretty do you know what no, I mean? yeah even if i blue dry it with a hair dryer it just moved it but it just looked rubbish right um but on the canvas 
it doesn't it looks good so um i actually tried tried it on there and i, I had a really it looked really nice and then i worked into it and it looked terrible um i worked on top of it with my charcoal like i usually do but what i need to do is give it a much lighter hand with charcoal right it comes out much heavier can i ask you something you mentioned spraying you sprayed it see i was thinking of ink from the dropper bottles yeah but what i normally do is i get ink from the dropper bottles and i kind of draw with ink with the dropper yeah then i get a little water spray bottle and i spray it oh i see yeah yeah so it disperses it then as well yeah yeah so i have some definite bits some yeah um, and that works quite nice on the stretch canvas. But then I went into it with the charcoal like I normally did. But it goes on much heavier on the canvas. Yeah. I don't know why. But, um, yeah, anyway, it ended up looking awful. So I ended up getting a load of gesso <laughs> and <laughs> paint, painting over it. So I've gessoed over the whole thing. The joy of mixed media. You can just keep layering up with all different stuff until yeah. you come up with the right result. And it looks so well, it's fun funny as well. It really does. Well, I actually um, painted over it in in um, gesso, and then I took a photo of it and I put it in my private group. I don't know if you saw, but I put I put something like um, I actually said to Kevin when he came in. I said, uh, "So, what do you think? I've done an abstract." And he looks at it and he goes, "Get off!" Because you could still see the old painting underneath it. So I'd only done one layer. Yeah. So it kind of looked like an abstract, but it looked like a crap mm. abstract. But, of course, he knew. <laughs> he, kn- he knew that I was joking. But I reckon you could actually put that up on some poncy website and sell it for a lot of money. You certainly could if you had a name behind you. you c- yeah, you could. Because everyone would just believe it, wouldn't they? Yeah. Or anyway, maybe you should try it. <laughs> one of my mindset points is about this, so... Uh... <laughs> Oh, okay, okay, yeah, let's, let, let's go that, let's yeah. go yeah. let's go on to this. So we're talking about today um, you know, how how mind your own mindset can affect your art. But you were the one that came up with this subject. So for anyone who doesn't really know what this is what you mean, what do you mean? I just I just mean it's it's not a big thing, it's just how you think about yourself, your work. If you're trying to sell, trying to keep yourself positive. And it, this really came up for me because obviously I'm trying to make a go of it as an artist. And yeah. um, of course, you get really down, don't you? When you're not selling your work. Yeah. And that's basically what you're trying to do to support yourself. So you get quite down sometimes about it. So I've been trying to do something about that. So one of the things I'm doing, which is in the group I'm in, is affirmations I think I've told you about it and they have a set of affirmations to try and keep your mindset up so this is all the thing I was uh, that gave me the idea for this mindset thing so basically I read these mindset things every morning and I just read them to myself rather than reading them out loud in front of a mirror or anything but it's just stuff like um I can't, God, I should have kept them open shouldn't it so, you know <laughs> uh I am confident in myself as an artist and I believe that what I charge for my work, you know, I'm worthy of what I charge for my work and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, just all things that basically you doubt yourself with. But it's, it's other little things. And I thought we could cover some of the other little things. It doesn't have, you don't have to be selling your work. It's just uh, keeping your head in the right space, really. I think that kind of is important in every part of your life to be honest because they do say don't they you, well, well we all know there are glass half empty people who are their kind of mindset is negative by default and there's the other ones who are a glass half full sort of person and they yeah. are by default quite positive people and I suppose a an example of that outside of the art is we recently had a bank holiday weekend here in the UK and it was four days long, which is lovely. The weather here since probably, I don't know, about, I don't know, 2002. <laughs> it's been shocking, oh. it feels like that. It's been raining and windy and just boggy and it's just been horrible, hasn't it? It really has. Yeah. And, you know, we had uh, two days over the weekend of just, just gorgeous dry sunshiny mild weather it was lovely i think we um, only had one 
oh, here we had, down here, right down the south, we had two, really, like the Saturday and the oh. Sunday were lovely. And then the Monday, it rained, and the Friday, it rained. But, you know, the amount of people I, I, I heard, oh, blooming raining again. And, oh, well, typical, it's raining. And, I, and I said, yeah, but we had two days of sunshine, and the very two days of sunshine we had were on the bank holiday. I mean, how lucky was that? I mean, I, I was just taking that as, like, the real positive. And yet other people are saying, oh, God, it didn't last long, did it? <laughs> <laughs> I like take yeah. take you know take yeah. the positive where you can get it and and really enjoy yeah. it because that's how we need to be. But that, you know that's that's what I mean by if you if you're generally kind of a, a more of a positive person, you'll probably find this sort of thing easier. But it is really important if you are less like that to really See, learn I'm less like that. Yeah, See, I'm I'm definitely a half glass half empty more than half full yeah but they say don't you don't they that you're actually i don't think you're born that way but you have a like you say a default and the default is kind of set but then you can make up say it's i don't know i can't remember the percentage they say but but the rest of the percentage you can make up yourself so you can make yourself more positive yeah definitely and I, and you know, sometimes I think it's surrounding yourself with positive people. And I'm, I'm a glass half full. Or I'm a positive person generally, and I'm generally yeah. a cheerful person. And what I find is that I only have to spend five minutes with someone whose default setting is the opposite, and it brings like me, me down. You I mean, I've never found that with you when we've met up because you're excited. We're going out on a day out, so yeah. you're obviously in a happy mood then. Yeah. But you know, when I when I see someone who their default setting is negative and down or miserable, my problem is I find it very. I'm very affected by that very quickly. So it's it's like it's catching. So if somebody else is miserable, I'll instantly just think, oh, well, you've just totally ruined my mood, which was fine <laughs> before I spent any time with you. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, it's, it does affect other people how you are. Yeah, but the main, the main person it affects is yourself. So if you are a kind of, they do have that tendency to sort of be negative, then you're more likely to be somebody who will say, oh, God, you know, well, I'm going to start my sketchbook and... You know, I'm bound to ruin the first page and I'm, this is bound to happen. And, you know, and it's like, well, then it will then, won't it? And even if you do something good, you're going to think it's rubbish because you've got your negative head on. And um, I think it's really important to try and, and just, I don't know, I suppose it's about expectation, isn't it, when you start something. It's a bit like... I was talking about earlier, wasn't I? I'd finished my painting and now I'm going to do... I have been sketching much more again recently. I've been sketching daily, which is great. I've loved it. But I'm going to do a bit more. I'm going to concentrate on that a bit more over the next couple of weeks while I haven't got a painting on the go. But it can be very difficult to change your mindset as a realism painter to be someone very creative and um, experimental in your sketchbook because you're used to... Uh, you're used to having high expectations of yourself and trying to meet them. Whereas actually, it's the complete opposite in a sketchbook. My expectations need to be very much lowered. I'm going to be spending 10 minutes on something max rather than, you know, 10 weeks. <laughs> and it's, it, if it's going to be perfect, it's going to have zero character. It's not going to be fun. So you have to kind of have a completely different hat on if you like and it's very easy to do a sketch like that in 10 minutes and then just be disappointed because you're like oh it's rubbish well of course it is compared to your um realism painting of donuts (laughs) it's gonna be isn't it it's a sketch but then you look at it with a different um mindset and you think oh well now I love it this is great this is just a sketch but it's I, I love it for different reasons that's the that's the thing about changing your mindset. It's about you know not having these high expectations. It's not. It's, it's meant to be the fun. Process as well, isn't it? Yeah. It's the fun. You know, you need to concentrate on the fun side of it and forget about the results. Rather than obviously, when you're doing a painting that's going in a gallery or something like that, obviously you've got to be mindful of the results and you've got to be a bit more self-critical, haven't you? But. Um, 
yeah, when it comes to sketchbooks, I think that's the, it's the best place to learn, but the worst place when it comes to being critical of yourself, I think. Yeah, sometimes I have problems with sketchbooks because I keep thinking, oh, I should start, or not I should, but I, you know, I want to start a sketchbook. But what the sketchbooks I like that I look at, and they're not necessarily these lovely ones, but when people have blobs of paint and, um, you know, they've drawn into it or bits of collage and stuff. But mm. I always think if I start doing that and I like it, then I want it to be my finished piece. Yeah. Does that make sense? Do you know what I mean? It's that yeah. battle between, oh, if it works out nice, I wish, I'll have wish I've done that loose and bigger. Also, if but you start a sketchbook and the first page is great, straight yeah. away, it's almost, a, it's almost a bad thing because straight away, the next page, you're like, oh, no, it's not, gonna be, it's not as good as my first one. I know I've ruined it. <laughs> Whereas yeah. if the first one was bad, it doesn't matter then. It could almost be be- you're almost better trying to do a bad one. In fact, I, I know what I'm going to be doing on my probably my first or second page of my sketchbook, and it'll be blind contour because I love blind contour. And you can't get much worse result than that, but they are fun. And I think they look good, though. They look I, really yeah, good. I, I love them. I love them. It does, yeah. you know, it, I just love them. I don't know what it is about them. I really love a blind contour. And that's, that's a great way to start a sketchbook because, you know, you, you turn the page and you're not going to do anything that's, I shouldn't say worse, but you know what I mean. It's going to be any less um, yeah. finished Accurate, than that. Almost. Accurate, yeah. No. Well, no. And also, do you not think that, I think that's a great thing for a beginner to do as well, because, again, that takes away all expectations if you do a blind contour. Yeah. And a blind contour, just in case you don't know, it's when you um, you look at your subject you're drawing, but you don't actually look at your paper or your pen. So you kind of, you draw it, well, basically drawing blind, aren't you? You, you can't see what you're drawing Exactly on that, paper. yeah. Yeah, and they turn or out really Or continuous line, I mean... Yeah, continuous line drawings as well. I mean, they're they're good, they're quirky as well, and they're not quite so difficult, but they are very characterful. But I think when it comes to beginner artists, um, they're so focused on, as we all were when we were beginners, of of what the result was going to be. Um, that they're Accuracy forgetting. Well. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh no, I've done that, and it's always get the rubbers out get the rubbers out and, you know, rub out their pencil marks and get the perspective right. It's not really the, it's not really what a sketch is about, is it? But then they're thinking too much about the result rather than just sort of really embracing that, the joy of just doing it and forgetting about the outcome because, you know, you're not putting the pressure on yourself. Whereas if you're thinking, oh my gosh, this is going to be terrible. Oh no, I've done this wrong. I've done that wrong you're pressuring yourself to get an end result that is probably not achievable anyway as a beginner and probably is going to be a very sterile and static sketch with zero character, you know. I mean, when I watch, when I look at um, people like um, Kosha Kuna on her, you know, when she does things like Draw Tip Tuesday and and we've interviewed her before, I love Kosha Kuna. She's such a lovely person, but also... When you look at her sketchbook, she does sketchbook tours and I absolutely love looking at her sketchbook tours and what I really like about them and what I really like about her is she will go through her sketchbook and there'll be some sketches that I'm like, wow, I love that. Oh my gosh, I'd love to be able to sit in a cafe and get that much stuff down and colour it all in without, you know, and and leave with that sketch. Um, I'm much more like, mm, I'd be worried people would sort of be looking at me going, oh, what are you doing sort of thing. Um, that's why if I sketch in public, I tend to do it more outside, hiding behind a wall. <laughs> but what I love about her tour, sketchbook tours is that you'll get some amazing ones like that and then you'll get another one on another page that is very, like, basic, a few sort of lines and it's very inaccurate and something that if you did it yourself you'd probably think oh no I won't show anyone that which is yeah bonkers really because she's quite happy and proud of all of them and she's quite rightly says well you know this isn't a great sketch but it's better than no sketch which is so true isn't it and that's uh, that's another example of the mindset she's thinking she's not thinking it's a bad sketch she's thinking it 
at least she did one, which is, again, somebody who's a very positive person will think like that. Somebody else who's not will think, well, that was rubbish. I might as well have not bothered. <laughs> so there's another yeah, example. Yeah, I think as well. And that's the only way you get good, isn't it? That is the only way you get good at doing yeah. something. By and being learned. It's the only way you learn. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. I think there's another thing about mindset as well, and this is something that you actually said, um, is that you thought you needed a certain amount of time to paint or draw. So you didn't used to go in your studio if you only had half an hour or whatever. And I think we're all a bit guilty of this. You you might think, oh, I've only got 10 minutes before I'm going out, no time to draw. But but you can. So you, you can have the mindset that, you can fit your art into any small amount of time. You don't. You could be sitting in the car five minutes. And I was actually sitting in the car with Kevin. Um, we had the dog with us. We'd, we'd gone out for Easter Monday. We'd gone to this really nice lock for a walk. And on the way back, we stopped at a supermarket just to get some sandwiches. And I thought, I sat in the car with the dog while he went in. And I thought, I wish I'd got a sketchbook. Of course, I hadn't gone with me, had I? Because I used to always keep one in the in the car. But even that thing, where you're in a car park, you can draw something there, can't you? You can draw people, you can draw cars, you can do a bit of the building. Uh, yeah, and I didn't have mine, so my mindset was crap. <laughs> it's a great idea to always have one in the glove compartment, isn't it? Of the yeah. car. Yeah, definitely. But you, I think you that's found so that right. Your painting, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, th- I think you when wouldn't it comes go in. To- no, I mean, with oil paintings, it's it's slightly different in the fact that if I only had half an hour, it'd probably take me half an hour to mix my paint, you know, so it probably wouldn't be worth it with an oil painting. But there is nothing stopping me going in and um, doing my sketching in, some, in, in a sketchbook. Funny enough, though, when a painting is going really well, that stage where I'm, like, loving it, because it always goes through stages of, oh, my God, this is going terribly, and, oh, actually, it's going really well... When it's going really well, I will find time for it. <laughs> and when and, and if I have half an hour, I will go in there and you know just work on that a little bit. If if I if it's going well, but when it's not, then I, I that's not anywhere near enough time. You know, it's funny, no. isn't it? Yeah, it just depends I've how actually, it's going. I've actually written that as one of my mindset things: is trying to have an open mindset while you paint and not judge until it's finished. It's but so it's true. Just what you're saying because you're. You're judging your painting, aren't you? You're not even finished yet. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And there's a, every yeah. painting I do goes through the stage where I'm like, oh, this is just, oh, this is just not going well, you know. Some of them you, you do and they just seem to work from start to finish, but it's rare. Usually it's a bit of a battle and a bit of a puzzle. It wouldn't be... You wouldn't be learning as you go otherwise anyway if everything you did just happened. Being judgmental, that's such a good example of mindset isn't it looking at something and going yeah okay so this oh here we are I know where we're at we're at the skanky teenage stage you know we're at the ugly part of the painting that's fine I know that it's like this for now but it's part of the process is going to get better I just need to make it you know improve it bit by bit that's that's setting that's a good mindset to have rather than oh my god I can hardly look at this thing it's horrible it's not going well yeah well, this bit never is. This bit is all—it's always a little bit of, uh, you know, one step forward, two step back for a while. It's just how it is sometimes, you know. One of those annoying things about that stage is um, you never actually know. So, so most of the time you can say, "Yes, this is just that normal phase I go through," but then you can get to the stage where you got to the other side, but it's still not going well, and you you don't know when to stop, do you? Because you think. With someone like you, you can perhaps keep painting on top of it. But what I do is like, is is this going to get any better? And it is hard to know, isn't it? Yeah. At the point of no return versus versus your head just saying, mm. um, you know, skanky teenage. Yeah. Can you save it or not? Yeah. But then you can just paint over the top of it, can't you? Like I was saying earlier. You can. Paint, paint my uh, famous abstract on it. <laughs> I love that. I love that. You see, the fa- it's going to be famous. You see, that's that's yeah. being positive. <laughs> My famous gesso abstract. Yeah, this is this is something I have a really bad, and I don't know how to get around this. 
I have a really bad mindset on this. And maybe you can tell me how I get over this. Now, this is when I either see some really, in my opinion, bad art win a competition, right? Or I see some really, in my opinion, bad art sell for a lot of money. I get very angry. <laughs> I'm very angry. <laughs> well, is there a such thing? First of all, it, there's no such thing as bad art because all art is good art. It's better than no art. But I, what you're saying is, in your opinion, one that's very, you know, you've got... It's a bit like when we've said this before, haven't we, when we've watched... We've both watched Portrait Artist of the Year or Landscape Artist of the Year, you know, and, and I know Paul and I do it sometimes where the person who wins, we're kind of screaming at the telly going, what, how, how did that one win over that one, you know? Yeah. And it, it's just like, oh, God, it's just crazy. But it, it is all about opinion ultimately, isn't it? But it is frustrating because you sort of feel for the person who... You just look at it and think, wow, you've just been brushed aside and yet you're incredibly good at what you do and then this person's gone and put a few dots and a few lines and sort of done something a bit... It doesn't really mean anything, but because she's come up with this cock and bull story about, oh, I, I was travelling around in my mind and I followed my journey with my pen... I don't know. And you just think, really, they've bought into it and that's why they've won. And it's just, I find it all yeah. a bit crazy, really. Well, I saw this thing the other day and, and someone says, I've, I've just won uh, an abstract competition. Um, at the world, it was, it was the best abstract in the world, obviously. Who knows how big the competition was. But um, this abstract looked like remnants of your palette, yeah. Right. So say you've yeah. got like uh almost yellow, green, red, whatever, and then kind of got your palette, say you got a bit of paper, smooshed it together. That was the abstract. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I love well, it. Well, I've oh. never got Jackson Pollock. No. And I've always called him Jackson and something else that rhymes with Pollocks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I just don't get it at the end of the day. And I always never forget that. There was a, uh, there was a, uh, do you remember One Foot in the Grave? People across yes. the pond won't know this. It's a sitcom yeah. with an old, an old bloke who doesn't really get on very well with his neighbour. Anyway, he finds, he finds a painting, what he thinks is a painting in the skip, um, because he's trying to make friends with his neighbour and his neighbour is a big fan of Jackson Pollock. And he believes he's seen one tossed out in a skip from a, an old um, house and it turns out that this this thing that this neighbour ends up having to put on his wall to be polite is at the bottom of a chicken shed. It's just all <laughs> splats of chicken poo. And, and the other guy actually believes it's a, a Jackson Pollock, which sort of says it all, really, doesn't it? But, I mean, yeah. it, like, we, like we say, everyone to their own, there's no right or wrong way, and that's part of the fun of art. Everyone likes different things. I don't really get how something that somebody throws paint at something can make a lot of money. I think a lot of it is to do with the name. In fact, I think most of it is to do with the name. So how do we get, though, how do I not get angry? I get it, I get it, because you go into that competition putting a lot of thought into your composition, your um, colour balance, your colour harmony, your tonal values, the pattern of those tonal values... You know, an abstract, people think abstract, oh, a two-year-old could do that. It's not as simple as that. You can very much tell someone who is a proper, who knows what they're doing as a as a, an abstract artist to someone who just does it and says it's abstract when it's not. <laughs> you can just tell. Um, well, at least you can when you are an artist, because you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, and it's very frustrating. Yeah, yeah, it's very frustrating when you've got one artist who's put all of those thoughts into place, and someone else who's just, I don't know, lunged at something palette. and just, you know, got a big name, done something like scribbled on something, and then I don't know, not put a lot of thought into it, and then gave it a fancy, weird title and a, a, probably a cock and bull story behind it, and then they've made a fortune, and it's very frustrating because. Yeah, I, no, I, I, I get why you feel angry about that. So how do I not feel angry and change my mindset? Well, you just have to remember that every, it's an opinion of the person who was looking at it at the time. Yeah. 
that's it that is that is basically it it's the opinion and and if if just as if i went into a competition and i won I i'd be happy with that though uh, yeah, but I'd be happy because I'd won. But I'd also <laughs> well, I'd be happy as well, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. But the thing is, you, you would be happy, and that, and quite rightly so. But you'd also, we all have to remember when we do this stuff. If I went into a competition and I won something, yeah, I'd be really happy. But I'd also realise that if the you know the next group of judges on the next day had looked at it, I probably wouldn't have won. I'd no, have probably gone true. bottom of the pile because they wouldn't have liked mine. They'd have liked the other person's. So it's all yeah. It would depend if they were into uh, it's or not, luck, or not, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's luck. It's luck of who you get looking at your painting at the time. It's nothing necessarily to do with how good or bad you are. It's it's subjective. That's the thing about art, and everyone has a different opinion on it. And it, you might win one day and you know not lose the next. Yeah, and and that's just that's just it. So just take take the Take the good bits when you can get them and ignore the bad bits because somebody else will be feeling the same as you. You know, they'll be thinking, what the hell is that? <laughs> yeah. It's just what, it's just how it works, isn't it? It's funny, you know? I entered a competition yesterday and, um, uh, and I thought, shall I bother entering this or not? And I, so I went to have a look what the previous winners were because I thought, if they're all really technical and good as in do you know what i mean really precise and everything there's no point in me entering but if they're all high modern art also no point but they did have a real mix i was like ah yeah try it because it's so bloody expensive isn't it as well entering these competitions i don't mind entering if it's free or if it's like six quid a piece yeah well this but when was... it's 18 pound a piece and upwards i'm like nah this was tenner to enter or 22 for three, so. Because what does it, at the end of the day, what does it really do for you anyway? I mean, I won a competition um, a few years back and, yeah, I was so thrilled. Did it really do anything for me? No, didn't. It didn't it, elevate was, your work? Didn't, no? no. All it did is it allowed me to put on my bio that I'd won an award. Uh, right. So then I could call myself an award-winning artist yeah didn't mean a thing it's never made me sell any more paintings it's never really done anything for me but you remember we talked about this before and i could actually call myself an award-winning artist i've told you this haven't yeah because you won a hamster cage when you were seven I won a hamster... <laughs> yeah exactly so i am an award-winning <laughs> artist but you you can say that quite legally i can yeah <laughs> But this is, and um, you know, this is the silly. This is what's so silly about it, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it, it, it's all just. You think it means something? It really doesn't. It, it, do you know what it does? What's is that? it boosts? It boosts your ego a bit as an artist. You're like, oh yeah, I've That's done a competition, true. and it does. It gives you a bit of an ego boost. Boost your mindset. Boost your mindset <laughs> doesn't mean you're better than the person who came last in your group because that person could be more you know better than you um if half the country was voting they could have voted that one but it's just the fact that those three judges at the time fought over it and maybe two out of three of them thought yours was better that's the bottom line so yes when you when it comes to competitions and that forget don't let if you don't get in don't let that I, I I didn't tell, don't know if I told you or not. I I entered the Jackson Art one this year. I never normally yes, bother. Yes, so did I? Because I told you, didn't I? Was did that you, last year? Did you get through to the long oh, list? No. Was that? It might have been last year. Was yeah. It, when was this? I re, I think I entered last year, and I think I got through to the long list. Um, oh, this no, year I, I this year I entered and didn't get through to the long list. Oh no, I didn't so, enter this year. But yeah. I don't. I don't care. I was expecting not to, and if I had, brilliant. And if I didn't, I didn't. Yeah. I only. I only entered two pieces because I thought I'm not spending all that. I'll just, you know, I'll just yeah. put a couple of bits in, and I, that's exactly what I did. I put a couple of bits in. Funny enough, though, when I put the bits that I did put in, yeah, was it three pit? I think I might have put three pieces in. Two of the pieces I put in, they sold, didn't they, yeah. at the gallery? So, um, oh, so you wouldn't have been able to get I, would, up anyway. I wouldn't have been able to put them in anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the other one I put in was my donuts, and I just thought, oh. How dare you not like my donuts? Uh. <laughs> 
But you see, last year I entered it and I got through to the long list. Didn't get any further than that. But and then in was previous... it with the same painting? Because no. that would be interesting, wouldn't it? I, I can't remember. It might one no. of them might have been because it was one of the wine ones. One of them yeah. might have been actually. Now you've said it, um, but I don't really care because I just think no. the only reason I entered. Well, you assume is you're not going to win, don't you? Those you assume things. and you think, God, if I did, yeah. great, I'll let, I'll win some art material. Brilliant. Yeah. But that's all. It wouldn't make me think, oh, I'm so good. <laughs> yeah. Just means, well, they, they obviously is the right judges today. <laughs> so you know. I've got, another, I've got another one, another mindset one. And this okay. is one that you're not going to like, right? Because okay, I have go the on mindset, then. I have the mindset of not being precious about any of my art. So I would quite happily sell any piece. Yeah, generally speaking, I'm mo- I'm most mostly like that. Yeah. You can't be, can you? If you if you want to earn money as an artist, you can't really be precious. I think that the donuts were just such a symbol. They became such a symbol, which it sounds really uh, foo foo. No foo foo. Foo foo. Woo woo. Woo foo. I think foo foo might mean something different. <laughs> it's like, like a hoo hoo or hoo ha or whatever. Uh, oh god, what was I saying? I've gone all uh, woo woo. That's it. So it might sound a bit yeah. woo woo. I can't even remember what I was talking about now. Um, yeah, it just—it was just the fact that I painted this thing at a certain time when everything went wrong. Just everything. I cannot tell you how many things have gone wrong since I painted this donut painting, and it was why I called it tipping point because it was literally the tipping point. So it's just because it's become this simple point in my life where everything started to change, and um, so I'm finding it hard to get rid of. And also because obviously it was the last painting where Sherlock, my dog, was sitting with me in the studio as I painted it all the way through. So I kind of, I feel like I want to keep that. But if none of that had happened and it was just donuts, I would, would I be keeping it because I really like the painting? No, I'd probably just put a lot more money on it because I would think I'm yeah. not having any less than that, that I want at least that for it. I think, you know, you said earlier, you just put a load on it. You can't really, when it's on a website and it's the same the size as every other painting in that section of your website what can you you can't just just double that one because they'll be going well, well, you can put why this is that special put why not it's your painting do it how you like you can put this has special yeah. meaning to me blah de blah yeah Ta- it will take a big <laughs> offer know. for this yeah. <laughs> if yeah. you want to make me a big yeah. offer then i'll well, sell why it not? why not why <laughs> not yeah 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 maybe but no I know what you're saying though you can't really be precious about keeping art if you're going to take it seriously and you are like that aren't you yeah I mean I suppose I'm lucky because I can paint much quicker because the way I paint but also I always think that so a piece I absolutely love now maybe you know and I'll look and I might even still like pieces from a couple of years ago yeah but if someone offered to buy one of those pieces I really like from the last couple of years I would sell it because I think in two years and another two years I won't like those pieces that's very true I will have gone past hopefully my ability will have increased a lot by then or Mm. the way I paint or my taste will have changed so I might hang on to it and then I think oh because I was up in our loft the other day and I'd got some One of the challenges I did, and it wasn't the 50 faces all the same face, it was a different challenge I'd set myself. I was looking through there and I was thinking, Jesus, these are awful. And at the time, I thought (laughs) some of them was awful, but at the time, I like some of them. Yeah, Yeah. it's so true, and I, I, I totally agree with that, because I remember last time it wasn't last time I went up in the loft but it was a few times ago I was in the loft and I just happened to come across some of my old stuff we're talking about old stuff as I was learning and I remember some of the things I, I, I saw I thought oh my god that's absolutely horrific I, I've got to get rid of this before I die one day because I would hate someone to find this stuff and it's got my name on it sort of thing but what's yeah. so funny about it is I remember at the time as a beginner being so proud thinking oh my god I painted this oh wow you know I just thought it was great 
But it wasn't. It was absolutely bog awful. But it it just at the time I just thought it was great because at the time I couldn't do any better that was the best I could do so I was pleased with that but like you say you get better and you evolve and your taste changes and it might be that somebody uh, you know else might go I like that obviously someone who doesn't make art (laughs) but yeah I mean at the time I remember no taste yeah, but you keep it because you're proud of it and you put it in a box in the loft because you, oh, I can't get rid of that. And I still wouldn't get rid of it because at the end of the day, it was a journey, wasn't it? It was part of the journey yeah. of to be getting a, a, to be a better artist. But, you know, yeah, you, you, at, at the time, you think one way and then give it a few months when you've got better, you look back and go, God, did I really post that on actual social media and say I was proud of it? Yeah. <laughs> it's part no. of the process, though, isn't it? And it's it's... You know, you were right. I was right to be proud of it at the time because it was the best I could do and I had learned something by doing it. didn't mean to say it was any good, but it was good for me compared to perhaps the one I I had done a couple of months before, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it it does. That that brings me to another point. Or are you still... No. You still on... No. And that is when you do create a bad bit of art, and I don't mean as in you feel like you're still in the beginner stage and you're very much learned. But, I mean, even when you've grasped a little bit of the skills and uh, you might paint a few good things and then you just paint the most horrific thing you've ever painted or drawn. And I think you have to try and not beat yourself up because that doesn't say anything about you as a person. That's not like you are a crap artist. That's just you painted a crap bit of art it's one crap bit of art or a few crap bits of art. Do you know what I mean? Because you have this tendency to start thinking, oh, I'm useless, I'm a crap artist. Not just, I'm a decent artist, I happen to have painted a few terrible pieces of art recently. Yeah. Uh, Do you know what as well? I think that the mindset you are in when you go into the art room or open your sketchbook that day... Yeah. can be the difference between you having a bad day in your sketchbook or on your canvas and having a good day. So if you go in there and you already have a, a negative mindset, you're in a bad mood or you're just feeling negative, it, it's not going to go well anyway. So, yeah, it, it is. It's right. You just had a bad day or a bad... It's like Kosha Kuna says in hers, you know, oh, it doesn't matter, I, I, at least I did something. It's a bad sketch, I had a bad day, so what? Which is such the best way to think. It really is. Yeah. But if she'd have gone in, it it might be that she'd, I don't know, it could be anything. She might have, I don't know, gone out of bed, stubbed her toe, you know, um, I don't know, just started the day off really badly and then she just feels miserable and goes into her and thinks, oh, I've got to draw something, I'll draw it. And you just know it's going to be bad before you start because you're just not in the right mindset. So I suppose... One good thing would be to actually try before you start to paint to get yourself into a better mindset before you start. So how would you go about doing that then, Tara? Because I know you say your default setting is... <laughs> is... You know, I'm not, I'm not as bad as I used to be, I don't think. I think no. I have worked on my head. <laughs> worked on my head. But, um, Crikey, that must have taken some not... doing. Oh, yeah, it must it did. <laughs> so I'm definitely not as bad as I am. But, I mean, I will still... I've, I'll get in a bit of a stroppo when I have when I create bad paintings. Mm. But this is one of those episodes where it's like, do what I say, not what I do, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it's more... I don't even necessarily know I'm going to paint a bad painting sometimes. Because I have actually been in my, stu- in my studio, in my office before and painted something in quite a you know a not particularly good mood and it actually puts me in a better one if you know what I mean. right. it can do yeah. the opposite yeah. for me mm. as well but I it's just that really hard thing where if you if you have a few a run of a few not very good drawings or paintings you have to try and talk to yourself and say look this isn't this isn't me I'm not a bad person I'm not a bad artist I'm just having a few bad days. And I think that's quite hard. And I yeah. almost I almost told you a story about 
stubbing your toe, but I've decided it's too rude for the podcast. Oh, you can tell me I'll later. I'll tell you after. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I want to delve into a little bit, yeah. talking about getting, how do you get yourself into a good mindset if you're in a bad one. You have been sort of telling me recently a little bit about, and I've, in fact, I think you've been touching on it on social media a bit as well, that you've been reading some or listening to uh some paul mckenna <laughs> yeah uh, but like uh what are they like p- podcasts oh, i pa- don't know paul mckenna well he's got if anyone's got a spotify especially in the uk i don't know if it's the same in the us but they now you now get um quite a few audiobooks included in your membership and um I went and listened to one of the Paul McKenna ones. He got a new book. I think I heard him on a podcast or something. And it, it, it's called Success for Life, his new book. And I thought, oh, he says you, you can download free audio to go with it. And it's basically got hypnosis sort of audio and then there's some exercises. But basically all the exercises are kind of in within the hypnosis as well. Yeah. So I've been listening to it at night. I don't know if you saw my newsletter. I wrote a newsletter yesterday. Did you see it? Uh, when did you send it? Yesterday. I haven't yeah, had my emails yesterday. yet. No. Oh. oh, well, basically, I actually told the story about this in, okay. in my email. And um, have, have I told you about the big picture thing? Paul McKenna and the big yeah, picture? Yes. I oh, think yes, I so read that... it. I think I might have read it on one of your posts or something. that You'd written a... Um, you was talking about the big picture, look at the big picture, and you realised you'd actually painted a big picture or something, and you don't know if it was him that made you paint the big picture or you. <laughs> yeah. Tell the story. Well, basically, basically. Okay, so um, so in this hypnosis um, thing, I do it at night when I'm in bed, and so uh, I have, I have, like I said in my email, like this headband <laughs> with earphones in, and I say it's like a John McEnroe 70s I have headband. read it. If that was your newsletter, yeah. then I have read yeah. it. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay, right, yeah, night. yeah, yeah. So, and anyway, I'm listening to this thing, and um, I obviously kind of fall asleep a bit during this. But he has but you this look really sexy with where, your headband on. <laughs> I do look sexy. <laughs> so he has he has this thing, and he says, "Imagine yourself. How, you've just had your most successful year. So, okay, so I imagine myself, me and Kevin are standing there smiling, we've got friends and family round us with champagne. I've got these massive pictures on the wall, and he says." Okay, now now go back three months. Now go back six months. And what got you to that? What did you have to do to get to that successful year? And all I keep thinking was, I need to paint big pictures. I need to paint big pictures. Anyway, so I painted a big picture. And and in my head now is, one of my goals is to paint a lot more big pictures. Now, the funny thing is, I then listened to this um, audio. And I can't remember if it's the exercise or the hypnosis one. I listen to it a few more times when I'm more awake. And near the beginning, when he's going to this exercise, he says, okay, now I want in your head to imagine the big picture where where you're... And he's actually using the words big picture. And I'm now thinking, is this my idea to paint big pictures? Or has he put that in my head by saying, think about the big picture? I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to try out one of these these things, these small kind of things, because it does sound really interesting. I'll send you it. You, you've got Spotify, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll send you the link. But yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the way I'm trying to improve my mindset by listening. I listen to a lot of positive kind of podcasts about mindset. Um, so there's another one I, I like called by Mel Robbins. And I was actually feeling a bit fed up the other day, and I listened to that, and it gave you, gives you a real boost. Yeah. And I think it, not only does it help in general, it does help with your art, I think. Definitely. I think as well, one of the things, one of the ways I would not get into a good mindset um, before going into a, a painting or sketching session would be to look through Instagram at artists because you Watch will... Watch the news as well. Yeah, no, definitely not. But art-related stuff... You know, realising that when you look at Instagram, you're often looking at the best of the best. And, you know, this is the sort of thing you'd see in a gallery or an art book if you went back 40 years. But now it's everywhere, isn't it? And it's funny because somebody said to me the other day, they were chatting to me the other day or they'd left some comment on something we'd put up. Um, 
about what annoys them is when they see people doing art reveals and or people in their studio or people painting and they're wearing a floral, beautiful, flowy dress, you know, their hair tumbling down their back, full makeup, nails all beautiful, you know, fairy lights everywhere, and they, they reveal their art and or they're pe- you know, putting the final brush strokes on and you you sort of think, Wow, what you know, that you're standing there in your big man shirt painted it covered in absolute you know puddles of paint and painting your hair your hair is sort of scraped up you've got no makeup on um you you know you've got your tracksuit bottoms on that make your bum look like it slid halfway down your legs and your old trainers on and your your art studio is a mess and you know you reveal this painting your painting's great but the rest of it is you know, (laughs) it's real, I suppose. That's the thing, isn't it? It's always, everything is edited on Instagram. Everything, nobody paints in floral dresses looking perfect. What they've done is they've gone and made everything perfect in order to reveal their painting and look at everything to look fabulous. It's not actually the reality of it at all. The reality is very, very different. And you know, it's easy when you see things like that to feel inferior and think, oh, God, you know, why am I surrounding such a mess? Why do I look, feel so unorganised compared to that person? And why don't I only look 35? <laughs> and why haven't I got a single pore or wrinkle on my face? And, what, you know, why, why have... why? you know just why why is my life in my art studio seemingly so completely different to that person's well it's not really they they were in a mess they were wearing their art stuff their art clothes they've got changed to make that art post that's the the bottom line i'd be very surprised if it was any different and there's a lot of i have noticed now i i don't especially tiktok my gosh, the filters that people are using on their, you know, faces, you're just like, really, you know, God. And I only, like you know, cartoon, you can just, don't they? they? They look like a cartoon of themselves and it's just crazy and it, it's awful. And, and I would hate to, for somebody to see me out and think, blimey, you look rough. I'm used to seeing you look like this. You are what you are at the end of the day. There's no point in trying to be any different. Yeah, put a bit of lippy on, of course. Apart from that, you know, just be yourself because none of that is real, including, you know, the art you see. Obviously, that is real, but, well, some of it, some of it's not. Some of it's AI these days, isn't it? We won't even go into that. But um, when you go onto Instagram and you see people doing sketchbook flick-throughs and their beautiful masterpiece after masterpiece stunning little drawings and you think oh my god my sketchbook doesn't look anything like that well it's not really meant to those people are treating their sketchbooks as an artwork in itself which is fine and it's great it's lovely to be able to do that but that's doesn't mean to say that's the right way for you or what your art your sketchbook should look like and that's why I would say if I was going to get myself into the right mindset to do some sketching I would probably go and look at someone like Koshikuna because she does flick a sketchbook flick throughs which are much more the kind of sketching that will get you into a great mindset because you'll be thinking yes you know that's reachable and she you know she's doing stuff that she's not proud of and she's owning it and going wow look at this it's still a piece of art and she's doing some beautiful beautiful I mean there's no question she can really draw can't she but she's she's happy to share the not so good stuff with the amazing stuff so that's a way of getting into a better mindset is to if you are going to go on social media look at the right people you know don't don't look at the wrong people Lewis Rosignol he's another one now he got a real battering didn't he I, I I you know his um Oh, some of his horrendous. work, yeah. yeah, some terrible um, feedback on some of his work. Now, his work is one of those I would say that is a certain people's taste. Mate, that's fair to say, isn't it? It's naive, we've, very we've naive. In, and we've interviewed him before. And he's a lovely bloke. Um, yeah. So, but what, what I what is so um, 
great about Lewis is the fact that he, the way he comes back to people, and he's like, yeah, you know, he'll he'll literally write their comments over his reel as he's making even the even more out there bizarre artwork. It's brilliant, isn't it? Almost to prove the point that he does not give a, you know. Yeah. But what what's so interesting is that he's done. I mean, he. he he does his art the way he does it because he wants to do it that way and that's what he finds really fun and and I cannot tell you how much I love his art I really do I've got his book I think we've both got his book haven't we um remedial sketches I love it when you see him do some of his bigger pieces I think he did one was it featuring the guy from Breaking Bad uh he's very clever so what he does is he does these his own style sort of sketches, you know, with child's crayons and all that. But then he does this, like, realism portrait of this bloke's head. And yet it's he's amazing, given him this sort it? of cartoon body. So there is no question he is an extraordinarily brilliant artist. He really is. So he can paint and he can really paint and he can, you know, he can paint as good as anyone else. He chooses to do the fun stuff that he finds fun and good on him because he must have earned a plumbing fortune from it because it's very very popular his art is yeah. very very popular so there's something you know you yeah, he's got a couple who, of courses now yeah and the people who sort of yeah. poo poo it and go oh, that's rubbish well look how look what he's done with it sometimes uh, i think uh, that there's a definite difference between what artists like and what non-artists like and that, that's a vast generalisation. But say, for I example, you, sh- you show me and you Lewis Rosenthal's work, and we'll both go, oh, love it. And yes. then, I don't know about Paul, but if I show Kevin that, he'll go, oh, my God. Yes. That's crap. That is such a good point. It is so true. Yeah. It is so true, because if somebody who's a non-artist artist picked up a sketchbook and you were doing quite the crude sketches like that or you know, like some of the ones that, you know, are more perhaps like blind contour or something like that, they'd go, oh, yeah. my God, you know, what is this? Yeah. But an artist will go, oh, that, I love that. I really love this. I want to take inspiration from that. Depends who you're trying to impress. I think the only person you should really try and impress is yourself because you're never going to impress everyone. You're either going to make the artist think that you're not an artist because you're, you know, or you're going to make the people that are non-artists think you're not an artist one way or the other you're going to lose so do what do what you want to do that makes you happy and by being happy you're going to be a more positive person you know yeah and it's and it's hard isn't it you've got to when you're especially when you're trying to sell art and things like that and or you're trying to get get into galleries and all of this you know it takes a long long time to get to that point and it's easy to lose um, um what's the word momentum <sighs> lose faith in what you're momentum? doing you, you, no? yeah well no more more like lose faith in what you're doing and thinking oh, I, see. I can't yeah. be good because no, i'm not selling and i'm not yeah. this and I'm, not, I'm no galleries interested to be honest when you do finally get into a gallery even if you want to um which nowadays is absolutely not necessary and frankly you know I'd much rather pay, uh, sell a painting through myself than I would through a gallery. It's, you know. Um, yeah, well, you've got their when, details then, haven't you? What? You, yeah, well, yeah. If you, exactly. sell, if you sell independently, you've got a chance to sell in the future. You've got a contact as well. Yeah, as, and galleries yeah. are going to take a lot more money and all the rest of it. But yeah, it's more that once you do... It is lovely, don't get me wrong. God, once upon a time I'd have gone, oh my God, a gallery, I'm in a gallery, brilliant. And I have been before. But it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to suddenly start selling hand over fist. It really doesn't. And there are definite cons to being in a gallery as well, as pros. Um, but the other, one of the cons really, and it's a bit like, whether it's a gallery another example is if you're painting a commission if you know it's very very a a very different feeling painting a commission or painting a gallery has asked you oh perhaps you could do something like this it's a very different feeling creating something like that than it is when you're just painting purely for yourself now when I paint stuff and it's on my 
website. It's, it's stuff that I have felt like painting at the time. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm doing this. There's only one, I'm not even going to say which one it is, but there's one I painted because the gallery suggested I did it. And I hate it. <laughs> I don't hate it. I don't hate it, but I don't, it's just, I just don't, I've never been happy with it. So, um, funny enough, I'm going to offer it to them to, to, for their, their Are uh, you? and just say, you know, just in case they might go, I love it. I don't know, but it feels different. It feels like, I wouldn't even say it feels like a job. It just feels like it's not coming from your own. Yeah. You. It's not coming from you. It's, it's something someone else wants and you're trying to get into their head and you're trying to do it. And it's not the same feeling. So if I would much rather buy a piece of art from, from an artist that they have done because they wanted to than I would buy a piece of art that I've said, could you paint me this? Because on the one hand, as a non-artist, I'd be thinking, oh, they've painted that because I've asked them to and blah, blah, blah. But as an artist, I realise and I understand that actually it's really, they probably wouldn't have enjoyed painting that as much and they probably wouldn't have painted that if they could have chosen not to. Yeah. And for me, there's more value in, pay, in in buying something that an artist themselves loves than something you've asked them to paint because you love it, going to you the, know. I was going to say, going to that idea as well of, you know, we're saying about, you know selling art and it takes ages and you can get frustrated yeah um someone i heard say the other day like if you if you set up a business doing something else say for example mm. you wouldn't immediately expect to make a fortune would you or to do really well no. if you think no. that you would be building so you would expect it to take a few years depending on the type of business to get established say but when we're selling art we kind of we feel like it should be more immediate yeah it takes a long time yeah you know and you you that's that's the thing you have to keep a positive mindset because you'll never last otherwise but the, i think no. the big the biggest uh, bit of advice i could ever give is to to stay in a positive mindset paint the things or draw the things that you find fun because you find fun not for anyone else and not for anyone else's approval it should be about how you feel about your stuff and what you're doing yeah and also spend time around positive people because it is catching it's very catching if you're around other people with a positive mindset it will help if you spend time with negative people it will rub off anyway i think that we've we've said enough to you i think i think we've ended it on a positive note shall i read out the last question now yes. it says do you make enough time for your creative pursuit and if not what could you do to change that now, we only had two answers, and I think this might be because I forgot to pin the question in the group. But yeah. there we go. Thank you for the two people that did respond. Three now, because there was one last night, so I've added oh. it. <laughs> okay. So, we have got Micah de Work. That is a very good question, and I'm currently working on it. I have calculated that I can afford to go from working full-time five days a week to working four days a week. I'm planning to do that and spend the day that is freed up largely on my hobbies, art being a major one of those. I'm also planning to launch my own website and start actually selling my work. I already take the occasional commission, so I hope I can make it work. And if it goes well, I might drop another day of my job, although I only want to take one step at a time. I'm already freeing up some time for my creative pursuits now, but I have a bureau life and I want more time for it. So I'm working on that. Uh, that shows at this time I don't feel I make enough time for my hobbies, creative or otherwise, to relax, but also that I'm ready, I'm already working on cushing that. That was your question, right? <laughs> well, at least, I didn't even remember what the question was. But anyway, it says, by the way, because she obviously listened to the last episode because I called her maker to work. Is it she? Is it she? Or I he? think so. Yeah, I've lo- I, think it's, oh. I, think, I think you're a she. I really apologise if I'm wrong. Um, I said maker to work. Um, and she says, by the way, my name is pronounced much like Michael, but without the L, stress on the first syllable, which is why I'm sure she means Micah de Work. So I looked it up because I, th- I was like you, I, it's not a name familiar to us here in the UK. So I was like, oh, I'm not sure if that's male or female. And I looked it up and it, I, well, from what I could tell, it's a Dutch name and it's kind of like Maria or Mary, but in Dutch. So I hope I'm oh, right. right. Please okay. correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> it's probably, if you're a big but, butch bloke, you know, bodybuilder, <laughs> please do 
do you know do let me know <laughs> uh, i've got carrie Bramahanna, and i'm sure she's not a big butch bodybuilder <laughs> oh we know carrie very well <laughs> yeah. so, i'm using the great app by james clear to help me show up daily it's called atomic and i really enjoy using it to keep me accountable for my goals being a full-time caregiver to my four-year-old i have now i now have to work around parenting duties but I managed to show up mo- almost every day. And now I'm trying to have art time together where we both work on our own projects. It's working, kind of. Yeah, when you've got kids, it's almost like you have to do it with them because it's the only only chance you've got, isn't it? You know? Yeah, but, yeah well, I, I remember know, that. But yeah. Adrian Scott. For many months now, I've been plagued with too many things to do, but not very much getting done. And no, they are not fun things, unfortunately. Desperate to do something about it, I sat and thought back to a time when life was more organised and each day had a plan. Yep, school. So I'm currently in the process of making myself a timetable, just like we all had for lessons. It's not quite so full on, but it's far... But so, but so far, it's helping, and I'm starting to see results. I guess I did learn something after all. <laughs> Do you know, oh, I thought that was... a great idea. Yeah, when I read that, I was like, oh, my gosh, that is such a good idea. Sort of like having yeah. a planner and then mapping out the times you need to be doing what. I really thought that was a very, uh, yeah, very good um, response to that and something I might, I might actually think about doing myself. So thank you for that. Um, we have a brand new question for our listeners today. And this is a purely selfish question. Um, The question is, what's the most creative and fun way to fill the first page of your new sketchbook? So what's the most creative and fun way to fill the first page of your new sketchbook? And it's because I've got two new sketchbooks and I want to start them and I want some real fun ideas um, for what to do for the first page. So yeah, you can all help me out. Okay, and as always, you can let us know your answers to the question in the Facebook group, which if you haven't joined, I suggest you do. Uh, We'll put the question up there and also on the Facebook page and on Instagram, which is Kicking the Creatives. And we'll read out the best answers in the next episode. And we hope that gave you the kick in the creatives you needed. Don't forget to pop over to our website at kickinthecreatives.com to find out how you can take part in some of our upcoming creative challenges. And of course, there you can also subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. And if you're enjoying the podcast, we'd be so grateful if you would leave us a little review on iTunes or whatever you're listening to us on right now, or even a star rating if you don't have much time. Um, If you want to find either myself or Tara online, I'm on Instagram as sandra.busby and my website is sandrabusbyart.com and my Facebook is Sandra Busby Artist. Tara, where can people find you? You can find me on my website, which is tararoskellart.com, on Instagram and Facebook as Tara Roskell Art. And also, don't forget to check out and subscribe to our Kicking the Creatives newsletter to keep up with all the challenges in the podcast, and you can find a link on our website to do that. Also, we've released a course, which is how to create ca- characters and cartoons for fun, and you can find a link to the course on our website or go to kickinthecreatives.com forward slash cartoon course, where you can find out more. And if you enjoy what we do and you'd like to help support us at Kicking the Creatives, you can now support us by buying us a coffee and you can find the link on our website. And we've just got a big fat bill for our podcast hosting um, fee. So, yeah, every bit of help would be great. Um, Thank you so much, Carol R. Thank you, thank you, thank you once again for helping us out this month. Very, very much appreciated. And the same goes for you, Joanna Brown. Thank you so much. Your continued support means so much to us. And if you can't help us in that way... um, then there are other things you can do. You can share our episodes with other creatives or write us a lovely review, all helps. And um, we really do appreciate any support you can give. But that is it for this week. And we'll see you next time. See ya. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed the episode. And if you did, perhaps you'd like to share it and leave a review for us on iTunes. okay that um i leave foo foo in this episode or should i
shenanigans. <laughs> yes, I like Fofo. No, I like Fofo. <laughs> you almost got my silly story about the stubbed toe. <laughs> Go on, tell I, me. I remember years ago, years ago when I was in my 20s, I, I don't know, I was probably at the time, but we must have been talking about for Sunday. <laughs> yeah, you can't definitely re- can't group- say that on the you <laughs> definitely can't say that on the podcast. Group, group, of, <laughs> group of friends and I said, it's a bit like when you stub your toe, isn't it? I said, um, you know when you kind of you wait in, you wait in, and then it suddenly hits you <laughs> when you know when you stub your toe. <laughs> and I thought and I thought, yeah, maybe that's too yeah, much. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's stick with foo foo. <laughs> yeah. Oh,